And last night, she looked at Temba and giggled. You're being charged for being good in bed. After two minutes, she giggled again and said, I'm dropping the charges due to lack of evidence. Good evening and welcome to Talk with Rams Live. You know, by the way, tonight the president is addressing the, the family meeting. We, we don't know how it's going to go. We have no clue. But one thing will definitely go well. The last episode of Fame and Fortune for 2020. So before Tumamina spoils your evening and possibly your holidays, take the next 30 minutes to be cheered up by this chat I'm about to have. So welcome to Fame and Fortune on Talk with Rams Live. Another opportunity to share in the wisdom of someone we love and revere and learn about their relationship with money. We find this important South Africans. We bring them to you so that they can tell you their relationship with money and tell their story. We are live on Facebook, live and YouTube as Talk with Rams. Although we also broadcast on the Instagram, please note that on that platform, our guest is not visible, but they can be heard. It's always good to go to YouTube and watch both me and the guest live on that platform. Please also reach us via WhatsApp. Voice notes only, folks, 067-271-8239. Please also participate in this chat by sending your questions on all the platforms, including Twitter. Uh, we are at Talk with Rams one on Twitter. Now, some people are very professional. So our guest uh, had a very early morning. She was launching her own project very early this morning, far away from home. But over the weekend, her home was hit by lightning and all her appliances went down. This afternoon, she went to an event and she came back in. But she still set her alarm to join us. Now, folks, I suspect she could have done it because she's also a sister from another mother to me. But I think she did it because she's just a professional. Join me as I welcome my sister, the Princess of Africa, a humanitarian, a UN ambassador, a broadcaster in her own right, a mother, a wife, a grandmother, and someone we love dearly. Repare it, let's say something. Thank you for having me. So good to have you. I have not seen you for such a long time. It is, uh, that's a travesty, really. I that's know. just so wrong. You know, I know, I'm going to come, I'm going to come and have coffee. Just fix the appliances. You told me everything is broken at home. Then I'll come. When it's, it's terrible when, when a younger brother leaves, leaves his, the, the sister, you know, it's te- or abandon the sister for that matter. Oh. oh, the knife is so heavy on my back. I'll, I'll fix, I'll fix this matter very, very quickly. But it's so good to see you. And I know that uh, you, you're not feeling exceptionally well. And I'm going to make sure that by the time we part, we are not only laughing, but feeling very good. Thank you. So everybody knows you. You know, everybody knows you. But I always say, I always say, old people forget easily. Uh, I, my, my old mother is, is eighty years old, and she, she would have seen you all these years in top speed and on television and everywhere. But I'm sure one day she could bump into you and, and forget. And if she came to you and said, how do you introduce yourself to people?" Um, Rams, thank you for that question. I must say that um, I never take anything for granted. When I meet anybody, I still introduce myself as Yvonne Minga. I don't think or assume that everybody knows me. So I think for to be very good and to be courteous to people, if somebody walks up to you and say, hello, my name is uh, Dombi, I think it's only catches for you to say, hello, my name is Yvonne Menga as well. Wow. Now, but she would then ask you, but how do I know you? Why are you familiar to me? What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure that sometimes you can say, I'm sure, Mama, uh, you, you've heard my song, Umkombot, Motherland. I'm in love with the DJ. I'm burning up. Or maybe you've watched uh, Gianni on television. You know uh, the horrible lady called Gladys on Gianni, you know. 
and maybe that will put her at ease. I see. I think it would put her at ease. And if she hated uh, Clarice, it may not be good for you. I think my mother, my mother can get very nasty, but I hope she doesn't. <laughs> Now, you're in a very tricky industry. Uh, we celebrate you, we love you, we make posters of you and everything else. We don't know the reality of what people like you go through. Uh, you fight to be paid the right money. Sometimes it doesn't even arrive, even, even after signing the contract. It gets cut and stuff like that. Do you believe you make enough money out of what you do? <laughs> um, Rams, that's a very, very tough question, but I can honestly say I'm okay. I'm happy. Uh, things have never been, uh, uh, y- you're never satisfied. Yeah. I don't even think uh, when Steve Jobs died, he was satisfied. I don't think Bill Gates is satisfied with what he has. So as people, we constantly want more. But um, I think, you know, when my mother, before she passed on, my mom would have been 84 years old. She always said to me, you know, um, money doesn't grow on trees. You always have to work hard for your money and uh, you must respect money. Let me tell you the truth about myself. I love money very well, much. I love money, but I don't worship it. I don't worship money. I love money because it makes me do the things that I want. It makes me help where I can. It makes me make other people's lives better. I may not be a a billionaire, but I help even if it's one soul, even if it's one boy or one girl, take them through university or, or, or help there. Whether it's Patrick, Godzana, uh, Godobsenville, helping them, Gadi Joe, and making sure that all those people there have got clothes and food. That's, that is something that makes me really happy. So really, for me, it's not about me making more money. It's about me being able to wake up help the few that cannot help themselves and being able to have food in my stomach, have the roof over my head, be able to say, I think I want to travel to New York today for a weekend, or I want to go to Kenya this weekend for a safari. That for me is what makes me happy. And I think this is how I want to answer your question. So 35 years or more in the industry, I think it's been slightly more. That's what Wikipedia tells us of 35 years. I know it's a bit more. Any one investment that you are very happy you made early in your life and you look back and say, I'm glad I made that investment. Plenty, plenty. I'm very, very happy that when I started uh, singing, I wasn't sure if there was going to be longevity in this industry. And being the person that I am, scared of failure because remember I was called an overnight success. I was called a a person who sings chewing gum music. So I was never given a chance to, to expand. Nobody thought I would be here today after 35 years, by the way. Mm. So I was scared of failure. So every little cent that I got, thanks to Phil Hollis, I must say, because my first royalty was 10,000 rands cash, mm. which mm. was um, something which was unheard of. I think Phil Hollis at the time wanted to buy my mother because I was 19. I wasn't able to sign a contract. You had to be 21 in South Africa to, to sign your own contract. So Phil Hollis gave my mother 10,000 rands as an advance to sign the contract. And it was those purple five rands we put yes. them on the floor, and my sister Rifilo was saying, Go, Mama, Mama bonus rich samba pez gue mad, and that was only 10,000 rands. <laughs> but I want to say, because I was so scared of the failure and not knowing that by 1987 will Yvonne Chaka Chaka exist in the music industry, remember this is 1985. 
Yes. And I just completed my matric the year before, and I was due to go to university to study law because my mother was not happy. She didn't just take this whole thing of being a musician. She didn't want it at all. So I just thought, okay, there, I'm in love with the DJ, sold 35,000 copies within a week, and mm-hmm. here's the 10,000 rents um, advance, and here is a, a check of whatever thousand rents coming in. Will I be able to sustain this good life that I'm having now? So I started investing. <laughs> I know, you know, it was so funny. There's a guy who was called Paddy White at the time. I knew about FTSE 100 at that time. At that time? Yes. Wow. I knew ab- about, um, you know, the stock exchange. But for me, it was like, ah, those things are far from me because this guy came from England. He was a very good friend of Phil Hollis. And I would go and check, what is this FTSE 100? You know, and he would say, please invest your money. And that really kept me going, I must say. From my very first check I invested, I usually did short-term investments, five years, 10 years. And that is what kept me going. Wow. Wow. And, and the normal savings, do you still earn and save some part of your money and you decide on a specific percentage or does it just happen randomly? Well, I, I, I made sure that my music money had to work for me. Yes. Because as I said, I've always been very scared because I realized that money comes and go and money is a tool that you have to respect. Mm. Money is, 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 you know, you, I've always said, you know, I remember when I said to a very good friend of mine at the time, let's start our own conglomerate because you and I will make lots of money. Yeah. And I said, if we do the Fasi Chaka Chaka record company, I promise you we'll make money, Brenda. And Brenda was like, Upambe. And I've always been an entrepreneur from a very early age, I must say. My two sisters tell me when dad brought us oranges, my dad used to buy us oranges, you yeah. know? And they will sit there and eat their oranges because they will say that they want vitamin C. And now go to the corner and sell my ones and come back with money wow. at home. So it, for me, I was not, I was scared that now that I'm making this money, remember I came from a poor family. Dad died when I was 11, mom and 40 rent as a, a domestic worker. Mm. So I've always known that what goes up must always come down. So the little that you have, let it work for you. It is good to invest because you may never say tomorrow will cater itself because it may, not, it may never just cater for itself. So true, so true. So <clears throat> do you believe fame and fortune are related? Do you believe when people become famous, they will make a fortune? Yes and no. It really depends. We are in a, a, a different place in South Africa. Um, the, 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 the number of people that we would like to see come to our shows or uh, buy our books, if you're a writer, or come and see the movie, it's very limited. So the whole creative industry space becomes uh, an entertainment for others. It certainly is not looked at as a business. Once we do that and quantify those things, we will begin to respect a silo market ganube and say, this is our big star. And you can't pay Yvonne Chaka Chaka X amount because he, she's just started acting and pay silo ganube the same amount. You know, so all those things. You can't pay Miriam Makeba X amount and pay and Amanda Black this much because those people were there before you Mm. and those people Mm. paved your way. And once we start realizing and appreciating our people in 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 the space, in the creative industry, 
and know their worth and pay them what they are worth, then we can start talking. So in South Africa, it's sometimes the press, they write you off. I've had people being called has been and things like that. And I Lois cuts like a says to Lile, if you have your talent, no one will ever take that away from you. In fact, you become you become an industry yourself. You become the light for others. You become you become the pave maker for others. You can never hear Americans call Aretha Franklin a husband or mm. even John Warwick, you know, even Whitney. But unfortunately, in South Africa, we don't respect our legends. You know, the very first film superstar, you know, people like Mem Miriam Makeba, who in 1963, when I was not even born, was at the United Nations talking about the atrocities that were happening in South Africa. We tend to label people, but yes, fame sometimes may not go with the having lots of money. But um, it, it, sometimes I call some of the work that we do a calling. So there's different people. There's different people who come into this industry because they just want to be famous. Others want to, to, to fulfill their dreams and others find themselves in this position. And obviously you then get paid. I tell people I get paid for singing, just like Tiger Woods, he gets paid for playing golf. It's something mm -hmm. that he likes. So um, it, 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 it's, it's that, you know, some, I mean, I look at people like Bo Medoli Ratebe, Bo Os Abigail, who used to sing in all these places. And when the police came, they turned themselves into Bo uh, and Kitchen and, 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 and mm. wash dishes. Mm. So those people did what they were doing because of the love of it. They were talented and they, it, they were exposing our culture but the environment at that particular time did not allow them to. There were no recreational centers for people of our skin. Yeah. So that's why we ended up doing all these things. So really in South Africa particularly, the playing field is not leveled for us people in the creative industry. You know, just for the record, because you mentioned it twice, I need to remind people that Dolly Rateva was the very first cover woman on Trump magazine when it launched, you know, and that Absolutely. is why when the sources then said was something was beautiful, they said it was Dolly. It was named after Dolly Ratev. You know, double Google Dolly for that. Double matter. Dolly means like double that. Dolly. Oh man, <laughs> let's not go there. Before I continue with my questions, let me read some of the comments on Facebook. Homozo Machila says, phenomenal woman. She's still gorgeous, beautiful voice. Nar Malibani says, my favorite. Thank you for inviting her to the show. Bongo Tochi says, Mom Yvonne, beautiful as always. And, uh, and uh, Ramu Khezu Mautwani says, Mama Yvonne still, still looks good. And I'll read some more later. So, 35 years ago, you broke onto the scene in love with the DJ. Between then and now, so let's not talk about before, before 35 years ago. When you broke into the scene, did you ever become broke, financially broke, when you are already known as Yvonne Chaka Chaka? <laughs> no, um, I would not lie. Really, as I said, from when I started singing at the age of 19, I was scared. I said to myself, I'm in this life and I am not turning back. Wow. I'm not turning back. But for me to be able to to lead the life that I was already in, I had to look after myself. I had to make sure that I pay my taxes. I had to make sure that I pay my vet. I had to make sure that I invest my money so that it can work for me. So I, I've, I've, I've tried to do other things other than singing. I, I, I had two hairdressing salons in town. Um, my salon, I think, was the first one to recognize that there were black business women who want to come in and out of the salon. 
So when Rams and them came and sat there, but the Bapusha did do low, but no patella forty rands, I knew that his turn he wants to go in and out. We had a private lounge, but no patella hundred and twenty. Yes. Because yes. she wants to come in and out. And um, I took my money and I went into the business, he had the limousines in 1993. Yeah. Remember, there was, there, were, there, were, there was no BEE at the time. You had to have an overdraft. So mm. the bank will see how much money was coming in. Obviously, you had to make sure you keep your cash book and your ledger properly. I mean, I did accounting at school. I wanted to be a chartered accountant. So I made sure that my money that I get from my singing has to work for me. And I must say that really that worked for me. And um, today I've invested at Lion Pride. I'm, in ve- I'm, in, um, I'm a shareholder at St. Amortos. Um, uh, we're shareholders at, with Mara Phones. So I am happy. I made my money from being a musician and from endorsing other products and made sure that this money has to work for me. When you work hard, you have to make sure that you work so hard that your money works for you. That is the important thing. There is no doubt to all of us listening to you now that you respect money, you are financially diligent, and you're doing the right things. You've already given us those examples. But all of us have a weakness. You must have that one thing. That is just your weakness, that your extravagance, where you think, this one I have to spend on for Yvonne. What is that one thing sis, that always you don't mind spending your money on for yourself? I, I must say, Rams, I'm a very stingy person. <laughs> I give. I give, yes. but I'm very, very stingy because I always say, if I just waste and waste, people love you when you have, when you can still do things for yourself. Yep. So I'm very, very diligent with how I use my money. I mean, there's, there's things that I love. I love shoes, I love bags, just like any other w- woman. But, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a slave queen. I, I don't, I, I don't want to be, I'm not flamboyant, you know. I'm happy with my African clothes and I'm a, I live a very simple life. But I'm able to say to my family, we can all fly to New York and have fun. We can all fly to, to Kenya or Tanzania or Rwanda, you know, to just have a holiday and, um, and, and take my family and my sisters with me. So um, that's how I spoil myself and those who are there for me when that final curtain closes down. Beautiful. So 35 years later, would you say you've made it? Uh, that's a question that needs to be asked people. I'm happy if I have to be given the chance to walk the same road with any doubt, I'll take the very same road. I've got no regrets. Maybe I would make things better. You know, I'll change things because I know better now. I mean, I've been to London where I I was um, um, robbed by the promoter and not given my pounds and performed and filled up the place. And, and the promoter just did not come with the money. I've gone to Tanzania, did a tour, you know, with my band and all other musicians. And, and the stadiums were full and the promoter just left and never gave the money. So mm. you, you, you have these problems. I'll be lying if I say I've never encountered problems. I've encountered lots of problems. You go to a show, uh, the promoter is gone and the people are standing there and they want you to perform. You can't say no because the people are there and the promoter is gone. And what do you have to do? Take your own money and buy the tickets for you and the band and come back home. So it's a double whammy from, for you. So those problems have always been there. But I must say that I pay my musicians handsomely because I cannot afford to make money on my own because I need those backing vocalists. I need those session musicians. So to be greedy would be a bad thing. So I'm one of the musicians who accept and actually appreciates those who make me as a frontliner because on my own, I can't. So I pay my musicians handsomely and that I can say with pride. I have two last questions for you. What would you say to 
artists, if you were given a moment to say to them, what advice would you say to them about how to take care of their fortune while they're still famous? Well, um, as I said, what goes up must always come down. And um, today we've seen the Jerusalem um, news, uh, song. Uh, it's just unfortunate because, you know, the streaming, we still don't know how much rents and cents or dollars it yields, you mm-hmm. know. Most of the money would go to those very platforms that make you expose yourself. So we need to change that. We need to make sure that the original makers of the music, whether the person who writes the book or the person who makes the film is paid handsomely, not that platform. So things today, uh, uh, you understand what I'm saying? I hear you very well. I, I I am the vice president of CSAC. And we have uh, said to them when they appointed me in March, there's three or oh, there's four things that needs to be done. Fair share for Rems or Yvonne or for, for Master KG. Fair share, fair chance, fair play and fair pay. That's what I would like to, be, to, to see happening to our creative industry. Yeah. So to those people who are making it today, know that money doesn't grow on trees. And money is something that needs to be respected and be guarded because tomorrow may not be there. So whilst you are, the sign is shining, make hay, milk it, do whatever, but make sure that your money works for it because you woke up very early in the morning to go and do those, make those beats or write that book or write or, 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 or create that film. So make your work work for you and make sure that that fortune, you keep that fortune. So for somebody who invested in FTSE 100 as a teenager, I'm not even going to pretend you don't know how the markets perform. I'm going to ask you a very direct question. That's my last question. If you look at every cent you made from day one to today, whether you've spent it, whether you wasted it, which I doubt you wasted, whether you gave it, whether you donated, whether you cherished somebody with it, if you look at everything you've made, would you say you have managed to cash in one million US dollars in today's terms? One million dollars, that's about what, 15, 20. Million, about 15, million 20. Rents. Yeah. 16 million rents? Well, I, I think so. I think I have. I, I, I think I have. I mean, I've, um, I've helped where, where I could. I've traveled where I, I've traveled. Uh, uh, the, 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 there's properties and things. So really, um, without blowing my horn, I want to thank those who've given me the platform, made me who I am. That is why it's very easy for me, for a child, when they say, Mama, I've got shortage of school fees. I need this. I help where I can. I can't be everything to everybody, but I help where I can. Because remember, we were born with nothing, with our our hands closed. And as we grow, as we live, our hands open to give and to receive. And when we die, we take absolutely nothing with us. Wow. Wow. Now, I'm done with my questions. I just need to, in thanking you, tell people how I can attest to this. Uh, that, by the way, in 1995, you were the first person to take me to Mozambique. I was a small, young music writer for the Sunday Times, and you took me and a few colleagues, and we went to Mozambique, and I saw you perform to huge crowds in three different venues. When I established Future Kings, my mentorship program with young men, you were the first big superstar to endorse me publicly, and for that, I remain completely grateful, and I'll never, ever forget it. And for that, my sister, and for the work you do, I wish that the 16 million you've done is just the beginning. Much more is coming so that you can give much more. Thank you for (laughs) tonight. We may not be counting it in rents and cents, but we can find the trail of the people who've been helped, properties that were there, children that we took to school, and say, yes, we did what we could. And I just want to thank you for being who you are and a a, a brother that you are, and a mentor to those young boys, because with gender-based violence that is there today, 
We need more young people like you. We need stronger men like you. We need to conscientize our society to say, yes, we are all men. But those of us who bring life into this world are well-organized men. But we do need ordinary men like yourselves. <laughs> My big sister, Yvonne Minga, Yvonne Chaka Chaka. Thank you so much and have a good night. Thank you very much, friends, for having me. And thanks to your people. And I want to encourage them to be on this platform and to watch this platform because I want you to grow because you are destined for greater heights because you are just an amazing young man. I'll call you a young man because I'm your elder sister, but you are just amazing. And I'm very proud of you. Guys, did you hear that? So it means you're coming in tomorrow evening, right? She's told you, she's instructed you. You can't miss it even more so because tomorrow is our last show for 2020. Opportunity Tuesday with Dr. T. So that's it. That was Fame and Fortune with the one and only Yvonne Chaka Chaka. To from me, Rams Mavote, my guest, and Freddie, good night and God bless. Happy holidays.